today, I'm going to attempt the Herculean feat of ranking every single Mario Kart 8 track plus DLC. Yeah, that's correct. I'm going to use my Mega Man pre-rank to rank all the original 48 tracks plus the 40 DLC tracks we have right now. And you may be asking, well, why not wait until the next booster pack comes out to finalize the list? And my answer to that is, I didn't want to and I'm impatient. Now considering there are a total of 88 tracks I need to cover here and if I spend at most a minute on each, well that will be an hour and 28 minute video so yeah I'm gonna need to go fast here. Each course will be ranked using four points of criteria, number one music, number two theme and environment, number three track design, and number four fun factor. When it comes to the ranking I will place each track in the range from double S all the way down to F and yes there are some F tier courses in case you were wondering. Also be ranking them within each row, the best being on the left and the worst being on the right for each tier. Finally, I will move in order from cup to cup going from left side of the top row moving towards the right, and then tackling the row below it in the same order, then moving on to DLC tracks. Now obviously I know I may ruffle some feathers here with my rankings, but these are just my opinions here and hey, if you disagree, then come at me in the comments, I'll be waiting and ready for you. So with all that said, enough chit chat, sit back, relax, maybe grab a brew or two, and get ready to listen to some random guy on the internet rank all of the Mario Kart 8 tracks plus DLC. Let's go. Alright, starting off with the Mushroom Cup, we have Mario Kart Stadium. Considering this is the first track of the first cup, it makes sense it's a Mario focused track, and well, it's okay. The track design is pretty simple with a few basic anti-grav and flying sections, but makes sense considering it's the first course and does a pretty good job at introducing new mechanics. It takes place in a massive stadium as the environment, Mario Stadium to be exact, and there's tons of fans, jumbotrons, and lights around. Sort of reminds me of like a Mario Kart NASCAR race. Music is great with tons of trumpets which give off a kind of victory vibe which fits in well. The track design is pretty simple and there's not much to it since, again, it's the first course but it's alright fun, nothing to get too excited about. Mario Kart Stadium isn't great at anything, but also doesn't really suck at anything. It has great music and a mediocre fun factor, but kinda lacks in track design and interesting mechanics. B tier. And number two we got Water Park, and this course is above average in my opinion. This course takes place in an amusement water park type of deal and it looks and plays great. The environment is riddled with park rides like ferris wheels and water slides, and even toads and submarines and mechanical fish which makes it feel lived in. The music slaps and reminds me of an upbeat Moroccan vibe and gives me a beach pool type of feel. The course also plays really nicely in my opinion, and there's tons of really fun underwater sections with tons of boosts and nice turns. In particular, I love the bank coming out of the water leading to the flying section. Super cool. It's a fun course overall and I enjoy racing on it quite a bit. Water Park has really good music, a great environment, and a course that utilizes anti-grav and water really well in my opinion. It's definitely better than Mario Kart Stadium for adding a lot more, so I'ma put it in B tier above Mario Kart Stadium. Moving on to Sweet Sweet Canyon, I think it's another above average course and has actually grown quite a bit on me over the years. First thing that stuck out to me is just how great the theming is. The cones are decorated as waffles, gingerbread fans, cake walls, honey spionata tubes, and Peach's crown at the top of the canyon, it's all super cool, immersive, and a nice little cherry on top. Hey, you like that? You know, to get with a course theme? Mm -hmm -hmm. I thought it was pretty funny. I don't really know how else to describe the music other than it's chirpy and fits it into the sugary sweet vibe of the course. It's great though. While the theming is off the charts, the actual design of the course is pretty basic and the coolest part is when it splits into two paths during the anti-grav section. It's pretty fun to drive on not due to the actual course design, but the unreal theming in my opinion. Sweet Sweet Canyon excels with its theming and music, but falls a little short when it comes to design and mechanics within it, so I'ma put it in B tier above Mario Kart Stadium, but below Water Park. Next up we got Thwomp, Thomp, whatever it is, Thomp Ruins, and I'm not crazy about this course to be honest. I like the jungle aesthetic of the course layered with ruins and vines and tons of waterfalls and such, but the music kinda kills it for me. I know what they were going for with a jungle vibe inspired almost by DK music, but it just doesn't work here, it's not catchy, it doesn't sound great, and music is really important for a Mario Kart course in my opinion. The shifting from outdoors to indoors and then back out is pretty cool and adds variety in that aspect, but the course itself doesn't really have anything going for it. At least in Sweet Sweet Canyon, the theming picked up for the simple track layout, but Thomp Ruins just does not have that, it's just really not that fun and kind of forgettable to be honest. Thump Ruins does not have great music, theming, and the track design leaves something to be desired with only a few jumps and flying areas, but it has the womp, so see where it goes. 
Next up is the first course of the Flower Cup, and that would be another Mario course, in this case Mario Circuit, and it's pretty mid to be honest. The theme is around Peach's Castle, which is cool, but besides that there is a few trees, toads, and that's about it. Just kinda bland. The course plays fine, the coolest part is probably when you go anti-grav and are able to see the track you just raced through below you, or above you, or somewhere in between, I don't really know. Sometimes anti-grav is a little trippy to be honest. The music is average, not terrible, not great, just kind of forgettable. The course plays fine, it's just so unmemorable, and that's the issue with Mario Circuit in general. It's just so blah. Mario Circuit, like Mario Stadium, is extremely simple in design and does nothing to really stand out from the other Mario Focus courses, but at least Mario Stadium had bumping music and a cool environment. Mario Circuit, C tier. Now we have one of my favorite courses, Toad Harbor, and oh boy is this a good ass course. The entire course takes place on a harbor and it's themed perfectly. The sun is shining, the streets are hella crowded with toads and trolley cars, storefronts, open air markets, and yes, even more toads. The music complements the environment perfectly, it's super fast paced summer vibe which fits the chaotic nature of the environment really well. The theming and music are awesome, but it probably plays even better in my opinion. There are tons of obstacles to dodge, it's really cramped, lots of branching paths and shortcuts, a good amount of verticality, and it incorporates flying and anti-grav really well in my opinion. Just weaving in between shops and trolley cars makes for a crazy and hectic race, but also just super fun. Toad's Harbor has a killer environment and music to complement each other perfectly, but the gameplay and track design bring forth clever tricks and utilizes anti-grav and flying perfectly. It's a hella fun course, difficult to master, and all around super creative and does justice to the Toads. S tier. Going from an S tier course to a not so much of an S tier track, we have Twisted Mansion next in the Flower Cup. First thing that stuck out to me was just how bad the music was. I know it's going for a spooky boo vibe like it should, but damn it sounds like a cheap remix you'll be hearing a Spirit Halloween or something. Bruh. The theme of the course does make up for the lack of music a bit, but it just feels like we've been there done that with the Boo Haunted Mansion, so it didn't really impress me to be honest. Twisted Mansion also does not play all that great in my opinion, it feels just needlessly tight and congested for no reason. At least in Toad's Harbor, it felt like you were needing to, you know, twist and turn to dodge a trolley or Toad's in a super crowded market. In Twisted Mansion, you'll have to dodge a table or a chair just because you're in a house. I don't really know, but the underwater section is kind of cool though. Twisted Mansion just did not do it for me in any aspect, to be honest. The music was corny, eh, you know, you don't get it, like candy corn because it's Halloween themed. No, not really. Oh, okay. Yeah, the music was corny, we've seen the Haunted Mansion a ton up to this point, so it felt stale. The dynamics of the course felt forced, and it's just not that fun to be honest. D tier. Rounding out the Flower Cup, we got Shy Guy Falls, and this one is pretty damn solid. Unlike the music in Twisted Mansion, which kinda rubbed me the wrong way, the music in Shy Guy Falls slaps. It's super fast paced and accomplishes this sort of outdoorsy vibe that Thomp Ruins, for example, couldn't. The environment is also super cool, again it's outdoors for the most part, but you'll be driving up waterfalls, flying through caves, and watching the Shy Guys mine away for whatever they're looking for, given they're always wearing a cape or something and their eyes are dead black. It's probably no bueno in my opinion, but hey, what do I know? Let me know in the comments what do you think it is. I have some ideas, You're I'm not gonna share them though. Right. The course also plays and feels super good too. Again, it's mostly outside where you'll be riding around the mine, climbing a waterfall, then flying down from it. It's just really cool. Lots of good jumps and speeds along the way too, this is just a fun ass course and it plays fast too which I love. Overall, Shy Guy Falls is a great final course for the Flower Cup and definitely does it justice. It has a super energetic and upbeat soundtrack, simple but pretty natural environment, lots of fun stretches to race on like the waterfall, and it's just so much damn fun. I'll keep playing this course on the regular A tier. Alrighty, on to the Star Cup now, and quick little spoil, this cup I call the Himothy Cup because goddamn there are some nice courses in here. Sunshine Airport is an awesome course. When talking about the music, imagine a typical elevator type sound laced with a ton of Nintendo dubstep. Yeah, that's the soundtrack for Sunshine Airport and it goes crazy. The environment is, well, an airport, but it's cool. You start at a baggage claim, make your way to the airfield, then take off with the planes, it's a nice natural progression that fits, you know, the theme really well. The course itself plays great also. Inside, when near the baggage claim, the turns are a bit more tight, but when you get outside, you'll have to weave in between planes and baggage, take off with the planes, then make a giant U-turn to then land. 
It's kind of cool actually when you take off you actually go faster than the plane to catch up to it which is a nice little touch I thought. Sunshine Airport is a perfect example of how to take a seemingly simple and frankly kind of a boring concept of an airport and actually make it interesting. The music goes unnecessarily hard, there's a sense of progression to the track environment, the racing utilizes flying really well, as it should, it is an airport after all, and it's just so much goddamn fun and satisfying to take off and land with the planes. S tier right behind Toad's Harbor since I think Toad has a bit more track diversity. Second course, we got Dolphin Shoals, and I hope you're not afraid of the ocean because there is a lot of water in this course. As the name implies, the main characters in the course are the dolphins who swim alongside you and jump through rings, which was a nice little touch I must add. The theme is riding through a shallow beach bank with tons of bright colored coral and sea life all around you. Very pleasing to the eye. Again, I must add. The music to accompany this aquatic vibe fits in swimmingly. Alright, I mean, there, there, there's no way you didn't like that one. Like, you know, swimming with dolphins, little plan words. I don't know, I liked it. I'ma keep it in. Moving on though, the music is great, and again, has a nice little beach time summer sound to it. There's a cool part though when you're in the water, and then you bang for this huge turn you come out, and this music goes from muffled to clear. That was pretty cool, nice little touch again. The track itself plays fine. Obviously, there's a ton of underwater sections, which is super cool, but besides the giant eel and dolphins, I don't know if there's much more to how this course actually plays other than those two aspects. Best way to describe Dolphin Shoals is, it's just a very pleasant course. The music is catchy, the environment's pretty, the underwater sections are cool, even if they may be a little bit barren, and it's just a nice ride, or cruise to be had. Solid B to your course right behind Sweet Sweet Canyon just because I dig the theming in Canyon a little bit more than Shoals to be honest. Up next we got Electrodome and this course goes crazy. I don't even know exactly where this course takes place, maybe inside like a speaker or a DJ set or something, but damn is it a cool course. There's tons of these neon green and purples, the track itself is like vinyl or vinyl vinyl, I think it's vinyl or something, and in the background there are a ton of speakers and instruments just bumping the soundtrack. The music is by far the best part. It's electronic focus which fits the theme of the course, but when you're racing there's a few turns actually where as you're turning, it makes sounds that contribute to the music, which I thought was pretty cool. This course utilizes anti-grav really well, probably the best so far. There's this one section where the track splits off into a green and pink path, or I don't know if it's, if it's pink or purple, you tell me. It kind of looks pink to me, sometimes it looks purple, I don't really know. My eyesight's not great. But on each path, there's like tons of these boosts and some really good drifty turns. Those turns I was talking about where it contributes to the music, and that leads out into a flying section, which is super satisfying. That whole sequence is really fun. Electrodome is the type of course that, you know, really gets those hyper, super insanity, super saiyan, gotta catch them all energy flowing. It's fast, it's loud, it's dynamic, there's cool path deviations, and it easily deserves a spot alongside the double S tier club. Finally, to finish off the Star Cup, we got Mount Wario, and remember when I called out the Himothy Cup? Well, Mount Wario is pretty damn good. This is the first track so far where instead of three laps it's just one mega lap which can be a positive if it's actually interesting the whole way through. For one, the theme is really cool. Basically you start at the peak of the mountain and race your way down. On your way down you'll race through ice caverns, a hydro plant, weave in between trees, then finish off with some moguls and an alpine ski section. I really love how it goes from this sort of like remote and desolate start, going through barren caves and hydro plants to and at the bottom where there's tons of fans and a giant jumbotron just like you completed or competed in an epic ski race. It's a cool story within the track to be honest. The music in the course is super good as well. It's fast, upbeat, and very ski-like. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm rolling with it. The course itself plays super good too. Each environment that I mentioned previously all has their own gimmick, kind of, from easily falling in the ice caves to speed boosting through the moguls, then going through warp speed down the alpine section. Awesome variety in play styles in each section. Mount Wario is a great example of why a course would need one huge lap as opposed to three. There's a story to the track, the music slaps and gets you in that racing mood, and the variety in each environment spices up the gameplay really well. And it's just super fun not having to replay sections you may not be a fan of because it's not three laps, it's just one. Easy S tier right behind Sunshine Airport just because I love planes, okay? Don't get too upset, I'm just a fan of planes. Alright, starting off the Special Cup, we got Cloudtop Cruise. First things first though, is it just me or does the soundtrack for this course have bits of Gussie Garden Galaxy in it? Maybe it does, because I love the music in this track. It's heroic, fast, upbeat, and super catchy tune. 
probably because it has Gussie Garden in it. The theming is also super cool, it takes place in, well, the clouds, and you'll ride through the clouds, onto a ship, into a storm cloud, then back out the end to glide through some more clouds. Yeah, lots of clouds and cloud top crews, makes sense though. The track also plays super nicely, there's some fun bounces in the cloud section, tight turns on the ship, tons of speed boost and lightning to dodge in the storm, cloud, anti-grav part, then a nice flying section to top it all off. The laps are short and straight to the point, but pack a lot into such a short distance. Cloudtop Cruise may not be the most unique or special track, but it has outstanding music, eye candy visuals, varied gameplay through the laps, and damn, if any Mario Kart track has Gussie Garden in it, well, I gotta give it S tier for that alone. Next though, we got Bone Dry Dunes, and I'll be upfront with you guys, I've never been crazy about desert courses, and this just ain't it, Chief. Starting off with the theming and environment, it's, well, I don't really know to be honest. Dry bones, but if it's a dry bone themed, a few skeletons and one or two walking around isn't going to do it for me. The music is also just kind of there. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but considering I don't like desert courses in the first place and all of them seem to, you know, have that Arabian, Aladdin type guitar or whatever playing, I just wasn't a fan of it. Sure, fit the desert locale, but wasn't catchy or pleasing to listen to at all. When it comes to the actual course design itself, it's it's okay, and I'm being generous here. In fact, racing on it a couple times prepping for this video, I just found myself actually kind of annoyed with the layout. Maybe it's just me, but some of the turns you can't actually see where you needed a boost towards after you finish it, and it just caused some unnecessary crashes and frustration on my part. But hey, your experience may vary. Maybe I'm just bad at the game, I don't know. Bone Dry Dunes is not the first desert course to disappoint me, and it won't be the last. Lots more to go, by the way. The environment is boring, except for a cool toad pirate ship. The music is blah, the course itself actually annoyed me, and it just wasn't fun. D tier right below Twisted Mansion. Picking up the dumpster fire that is Bone Dry Dunes, we have Bowser's Castle. And hey, it's pretty good. Biggest standout to me is just how badass the actual castle is itself. The corridors are tight and feel dangerous, there's tons of lasers, fire, and wrecking balls. There's even a big ass mechanical Bowser smashing the bridge over a field of lava. Probably inspired by Shrek to be honest, that's what it reminded me of when he's on the bridge with Donkey and he's shaking it. I don't know, do you see it? I see it. It's a classic, come on now. The music also hits super hard, it kind of surprised me just how hard rock it is, but totally fits the theme and environment of the course. It's just a hard rock jam. Like, the course plays really well too though. Like I mentioned, there's tons of obstacles within the castle, but also leaving the castle, there's fireballs everywhere, and it just looks like the world is crumbling around the castle. Which is pretty cool if you ask me. The name of the course is Bowser's Castle, and great news, it holds up to that name. The music is hardcore metal rock, the theme is dark, gritty, and scary. The course is difficult and requires a ton of maneuvering to dodge all the obstacles. And it's damn fun to go toe to toe with that gay Chad Bowser. S tier right behind Mount Wario. Alright, to finish off the special cup is, of course, the first Rainbow Road track. Don't worry, there's more to come. While this one may not be my favorite, it's definitely not that bad and has a lot going for it, actually. This track takes place on a space station, I'm pretty sure, and in the backdrop you'll see astronaut toads orbiting space stations, planets, and even some space bleachers which are actually pretty cool, I wish we had those on Earth, but we don't, so hey, what are you gonna do? Now I love most, if not all, Rainbow Road soundtracks, and this one is no different. It's a futuristic, synthwave type of feel and perfectly encompasses that wondrous, fantastical Rainbow Road feel. It also plays really well too, the track resembles, again, a typical Rainbow Road vibe and looks great and feels great. There's sections where you'll be straight out in the space having to hit those massive turns with no rail, then you'll go inside the space station, which is also pretty fun with these conveyor belts, which add a nice touch that isn't seen in many other tracks, except for Toad's Factory. Where is Toad's Factory, by the way? Better be in the next wave. Again, this isn't my favorite Rainbow Road out of the bunch, but it can hold its own. The music is typical, but hits. The theming is great and true to the vision. It races really well and can actually play pretty fast. And it's just some good fun. A tier right behind Chai Guy Falls. Starting off with the Egg Cup is, well of course, Yoshi's Circuit. Now, I love Yoshi more than most, hell, the only reason you aren't seeing him in every track is because I wanted to make it a little more varied for y'all, but this one isn't it. The novelty of the course is that it's shaped like a Yoshi, which is cool and unique, but what else is there? Turns out, not much. The theme is based on Yoshi, and there's a few Yoshis on the sidelines, but like, every course has that I'm pretty sure, so I think the theming overall is a bit barren. The music is also kind of 
meh. It's really fast paced and incorporates tunes from the Yoshi games, which is cool, but it felt like it was just fast to be fast. And it also wasn't catchy, which hurts it too. It plays fine. It's just so goddamn stale, to be honest. It's like if you're gonna name the course Yoshi Circuit and the only thing that resembles Yoshi is the course outline and nothing else, I don't know, it just feels like a cop out. Music is meh, theme is meh, course design is meh, but it's not bad necessarily. It's just meh. B tier behind Dolphin Shoals. Next up is Excite Bike Arena, and geez, this is kind of a nice break from the typical Mario Kart course. The course design is just one giant, super skinny oval with a ton of speed boosts and jumps along the way, and that's about it. It's just fun to, you know, constantly hit those speed boosts and zoom down the track at super high speeds. It plays pretty fast. The theme is based on a dirt biking track, and it shows. The road is obviously dirt, there's mud spills around, and there's a giant crowd. There's not much to look at around you, but like the track design, the theme and environment are simple. The music is this fast beat retro tune, which I actually really liked. I would usually shit on a course for, you know, having such a simple design and not many course mechanics, but Excite Bike really only has one goal to go fast, the music plays fast, the track begs you to use those speed boosts, and the environment complements that simple design philosophy. B tier right behind Water Park. Dragon Driftway is the next course, and I can confirm it is a course. So the theme is basically you're driving through this huge dragon, and you'll drive up and down the spine looking at different pieces of art and other pretty cool decorations, especially these murals with Lakitu. Just take a peep at them really quick. It's nice, isn't it? Looks pretty cool. I like the idea. Has a little flair. The music really complements the dragon aesthetic perfectly and it stands out as its own genre compared to other courses. It's this sort of like Chinese vibe with tons of flute and wind instruments which all sound really good and is pretty unique for a Mario Kart course. Not many courses actually sound like this one. Now, I've always been a little bit annoyed with how tight the turns can be and a somewhat cheesy map design at some points, but after playing it I've come to appreciate it more. It's cool scale in the dragon and the anti-grav sections do a great job at adding verticality to the course. Lots of speed boosts and even a small flying section which is great. And Driftway really is not for everyone, in fact I get pissed quite a bit playing this one, but I can't not applaud the super unique theme, even more unique music, the annoying but fun feel of the course, and it just gives off like a zen vibe. Even if that involves ripping my hair out from time to time. Maybe I've done that, maybe I haven't, I'll let you decide. A tier right behind Rainbow Road. Lastly, for the Egg Cup, we got a track from the beloved series F-Zero, in this case named Mute City. Let me just say first, if Nintendo never releases another F-Zero game, hey, at least we got this course, and good news, it's great. The course takes place in a sci-fi futuristic city with flying cars, giant modern looking skyscrapers, and these huge motherships. The background is also nice, you know, nice sprite sky with a city landscape, and then some distant planets too, adds this nice sense of depth. The music is also sick with a super fast paced futuristic tune which really set the mood well for this course. I know I said Excite Bike plays fast but Mute City is on another level and it should be considering it's an F-Zero course. There are speed boosts basically everywhere you look and you could probably play with your eyes closed and still hit like 50% of them. Assuming though you're not falling off the track the entire time then I guess it would probably be a bit below 50% but that's besides the point. It plays fast and it's awesome. There's also a really cool anti-grav section, one in particular where it's like a really big loop-de-loop, -loop, which, I don't know, I thought was pretty cool and fun. Mute City does not look like, and does not play like a typical Mario Kart course, which is why I love it. The theme is uncharacteristic, the music is wacky and different, the design is leagues faster than any other course, and damn it, it's fun to haul ass down Mute City. A tier, behind Shy Guy Falls. Moving on to the Crossing Cup, we have the very unique Baby Park. Now I must confess, the theme for this course is pretty cool and fits the baby theme really well. I think you're in like a miniature amusement park or something and there's roller coasters wrapped around the track, tons of ferris wheels and rides, and also a miniature baby castle which is made out of toy blocks, which is pretty fitting for the theme in my opinion. The music is also baby-like, I don't really know, it's just you know, happy, upbeat, cheery, kind of like a really fast lullaby. Unlike in other Mario Kart tracks too, on the third lap the music usually speeds up, but in Baby Park it speeds up a little bit each lap, and yeah, there's seven of them actually. The track design is just a super small oval and there's not much to it, there's a few boosts, but it makes for a super hectic race. The longer are the days of being in first place and never seeing whoever the hell's in 12. 
Now in this course, everyone's kind of in all, you know, the same vicinity. So it makes items and all that really random and you can easily be caught in the crossfire. The theming for Baby Park totally fits the name. The environment is riddled with miniature roller coasters and games. The music is average, but speeds up each of the seven laps, which is pretty cool. And it's just some good, crazy fun that's truly unlike any other course on this list. B tier behind Excite Bike. Next up, we have my least favorite dairy product, Cheeseland. There's not much to say about this course other than it's literally just cheese. There is actually nothing else to it. It already has a really lame idea in the first place, but the fact that this course has nothing to show for it besides cheese as walls is, well, not gonna do it for me. The music is average, and I'm being generous here. It kinda sounds like a happy lo-fi mix where you'll find one of those 24-7 lo-fi radios on YouTube. Yeah, this one's pretty easy. Lame idea, extremely boring and bland environment, average music, and just super boring to race on. Bottom of D tier because at least those other courses have somewhat of an idea and theme to it. Alright, now that we're through the crapshoot that is Cheeseland, we move on to another great course. That would be Wildwoods, of course. And I'm realizing how much I'm saying course a lot, but hey, what are you going to do is a course review, so I guess, you know, we live with it. The premise of the course... Yeah, okay, I get it is you're riding through a giant treehouse and I'm pretty sure you'll explore the Shy Guy Town, some cool tunnels, and even riding down a tree water slide type of thing or something like that. The music fits the treehouse Ewok theme perfectly and it incorporates some Shy Guy sounds with a forest vibe to it. The course also plays super fun. There's really good anti-grav sections, the flying feels good, there's a lot of deviating paths and shortcuts, and in particular riding down the tree on the river is super fun. Wildwoods takes a, you know, simple premise of a tree or a tree house and actually adds value to it and makes it fun, unlike Cheeseland. Wildwoods is just an all-around really good gem of a course. The treehouse theme totally works and feels lived in, the music sets the forest mood perfectly, the track itself is diverse and has a lot of unique sections, and it's fun seeing all the toads and chives all living in the trees like Ewoks. Though I do think the Ewoks would rip them apart in a 1v1, but hey, let me know what you think. I got 50 on this dude right here, whoever, I don't know his name. He's a badass though. B tier above water park. To round out the crossing cup, it's only fitting that the final course is Animal Crossing. Now I'll admit straight up, I'm gonna rank this probably a little higher than it should be, but I do love some Animal Crossing, so screw it. The environment takes place in the Animal Crossing universe and you'll ride through town, see iconic structures like the museum, and see tons of villagers scattered around the sidelines. This is also the only course that has variants to it, and it's super fitting considering Seasons are a huge mechanic in the actual series itself. You're watching the Winter variant right now, but all the other Seasons bring a nice little refresh in the looks department. The music is also great. I mean, it's Animal Crossing music, so how can it be catchy, right? The course also plays great too. There's some nice turns, a cool flying section where you can pop balloons from the games and get bells too instead of coins. That's a nice little touch. And also a little beach section at the end that leads back into town. I've always been a fan of both Animal Crossing and Mario Kart, so I kind of got the best of both worlds here. The theme and environment are off the charts, the music is iconic to the series, it plays fine, and it's just super fun seeing all the Animal Crossing decor around the courses. A tier right behind Mute City. Onto the Shell Cup we go, and we're starting off with a bang, which would be Moo Moo Meadows. Now, I don't know about you, but I was hella hyped to see Meadows make a return from the Wii, and damn it holds up well. You're racing through some random farm, but given the name of the course, there's tons of cows roaming around, and it begs the question as to, you know, why are we actually racing in a cow enclosure? Seems a little dangerous for both the racers and the cows, but that's just me. To match that farm-like environment, the music also fits in really well here. I mean, what more do I need to say? It's an iconic song for a reason and still holds up from the Wii days. The course itself plays really nicely, the cows progressively crowd the track more and more, the Monty Mole section is pretty fun and rewards smart play. And damn it, those cows always need to be moving though, like let's be real, I don't get it. Every time I race here, the cows always magically are extra motivated to try and block the road. I mean, do they ever even get a break? Justice for the cows, join my movement to help free them from this blatant animal cruelty from Nintendo. Or don't, because it does make for a more interesting course in my opinion. Puma Meadows was a beloved course on the Wii, and it holds up. The music is a classic, the environment is a sweet countryside vibe, and it plays great, and damn it, those cows carry it to A tier. So we got another Mario Circuit course, and long story short, this is basically the same thing as Mario Stadium, just without the cool environment and course mechanics. It takes place in a circuit, I guess, with some SNES-style colorful blocks around the track. The music is mid and sounds like any run-of-the-mill basic Mario Kart track. It plays just fine though, like nothing terrible, but also you're not going to remember anything about it. 
Yeah, guys, I don't know. It just really seems to me that this is Mario Kart Stadium just without all the cool features like the environment and cool anti-grav sections. Just super dry and boring in my opinion. Top of D tier. On to another just fun and nice course, and that would be Cheap Cheap Beach. And guys, make sure not cheaping out by checking out today's sponsor. Just kidding, I wish I had a sponsor though. But it's me. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you're enjoying the video or not. Maybe just do it. Please and thank you. I would really appreciate it, by the way. Back to the video though, the brightest spot of this course is, well, how damn bright and vibrant the entire course looks. There's really nice beach plants on the dock, the water is super bright blue with tons of coral and stuff like that. There's also this jungle section with palm trees and parrots, it all looks really great in my opinion. The music is also stellar with a nice upbeat tropical vibe to it which fits in perfectly with, you know, that island beach theme. The chorus also plays great, there's options to go underwater or on sand, there's a super long sandbar which makes for some fast racing. The jungle part has a ton of twists and turns, and it's just very enjoyable the whole way through. The crabs are a nice obstacle to have, but I don't know if they actually impact the course all that much, but hey, would rather have them than not. Cheap Cheap Beach is another course that may excel in the looks department, but leaves a little something to be desired with the course mechanics. At least everything is very consistent and makes sense for the direction of the course though, which is why I'm putting it in B tier right in front of Water Park. Finish off the Shell Cup, we have the Nintendo 64 Classic Toad's Turnpike. Don't actually know if it's a classic, just kind of sounded right. Now I tried to give this course a fair shake, I really did, but it just didn't do it for me. The music is dull with it mainly being this little techno jingle kind of on a loop for the entire course. The environment is set in a turnpike and that's all. Yeah, there's cars driving around, billboards outside, city lights, which is all great, but like what's the reason to come back to it? I really couldn't find any. It plays alright though, there's actually quite a bit of path deviations which is pretty exciting and allows for a more varied lapse, but that's probably the strongest aspect of this course in general. It plays fine, but that's the best I can say about it. Kinda just reminded me of a lame version of Moonview Highway to be honest. Overall, I wish we had a better course to close out the Shell Cup, but Toad's Turnpike is kinda disappointing to say the least. The environment is just a turnpike, the music is kind of annoying and dull. There's decent track deviation, but it's just not that fun to play on. D tier right behind Mario Circuit just because my expectations were a little bit higher for Toad's Turnpike than Mario Circuit. New cup, new course, and starting off the banana cup we got another desert course, which is Dry Dry Desert. Yeah, remember when I told you there's a lot more desert courses to look forward to? Well here we go again. This course is dry as hell. Hey, you like that? You know, like weaving it in with the name a little bit? I do because it's dry and blah. The environment is set to resemble ancient Egypt with pyramids in the background and whatnot, so it has that going for it at least. The music fits the theme though, it has this sort of Egyptian vibe to it which is fitting. Where the course really falters though is with the design. I kid you not, the only interesting mechanic of this course is a sand type whirlpool which is extremely easy to dodge, there's actually nothing else and even that whirlpool isn't that interesting. Like most desert courses, this one made me snooze. The environment and music are true to the name, but lack hard and unique course mechanics and variety. Easy D tier right above Bone Dry Dunes just because I like the music a bit more here. Up next in the Banana Cup is Donut Plains 3 and I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong and boy was I wrong about this course, it's actually super fun. It's an SNES course so it's somewhat limited in what it can actually become without being a total remake, but it's just fast fun racing. First off the environment is retro themed so don't expect too much in that department. But the music also does a great job at throwing back to the original course on the SNES. It's catchy, retro, fast, and fits, again, the retro theme of the course really well. The track itself also plays much better than I remember playing. There are a ton of twists and turns, the water section adds a nice little, you know, jolt to the variety, and the design is simple, but in the same light begs for the hectic and crazy racing. Donut Plains is an SNES course, but don't let that deceive you like I was. It's some goddamn fun. The music is awesome, the environment is retro, the design plays really tight and fast, and I look forward to playing this one a lot more in the future. Solid B tier right behind Water Park. At third in the Banana Cup we have Royal Raceway releasing all the way back on the Nintendo 64. First point I want to touch on is the theme and environment. The theme is centered around all the princesses like Peach, Daisy, and Rosalina, and it shows. There's all their primary colors everywhere, everything is very well polished and put together. Really nice looking cherry blossom like trees, and there's these giant hot air balloons with all their logos on it when you're gliding. The music is sort of this retro funky sound and 
I'm not sure it fits in with the theme that well, but it's catchy and sounds super nice. I love the environment and music, but I must confess the layout needs a little spark. There's great drifty turns and the flying section is nice overlooking the water and castle, but other than that it's just a pretty basic Mario Circuit-esque type of racing. Even with all that said though, the theme and music really pulls the weight of this course. Royal Raceway isn't going to reinvent the wheel or anything, but it excels in theming and music, just kind of lacks in establishing itself as its own course. B tier right above Cheat Cheat Beast just because I like the theming here a bit more. Finishing off the Banana Cup, it makes sense that it's DK Jungle from the 3DS. Now I never actually own a 3DS, so I lack any nostalgia that would help this one out, but it doesn't even need it. Right off the bat, the environment is awesome. It puts Thomp Ruins to shame. You start off in the jungle, then you move into this like golden banana temple, back out to a giant whitewater river, then back through to the jungle. Each section fits the overall theme pretty well, but is able to stand on its own as a unique part of the course. The music is awesome here too. I think it's just a remix of some DK music, but hey, why not use it when DK music is already super catchy and well known, right? The course also plays really nicely. The flying section with the stone statues is kind of mid, but both the jungle and banana temple are really clever and use the anti-grav and tight turns to its advantage. Hey, maybe I'm a little biased here, but who doesn't love a great DK jungle course, right? I know it's not me. DK Jungle is a prime example of how to do a jungle course justice. Outstanding theming and environments, iconic music, doesn't go overboard with track mechanics, and kinda just makes me want to go bananas talking about it. B tier right above Wild Woods due to the DK music. Moving on to the Leaf Cup, we are starting off with Wario's Circuit, and let me tell you it definitely has a leg up over Mario Circuit. I cannot preface this more. The music goes freaking bonkers here. It's a super fast paced, like synth wavy electronic y vibe that totally fits Wario as a character. The environment also fits Wario with mud roads and almost industrial look to it, and lots of fire and piranha plants. But personally, I'm not crazy about the whole aesthetic, and I think it looks a little corny to be honest but I can't deny it fits in perfectly here. This one kind of plays in a way where I would imagine an Excite Bike Arena to play if it wasn't just one giant oval. There's a good amount of jumps in this, a cool anti-grav turn where you'll need a dodge fire, and ends with a dirty sort of like underwater section, almost like a sewer. However, it just doesn't do anything to really stand out in my eyes. Wario Stadium music goes crazy, and the environment fits the Wario character as a whole, but again, personally, I don't care a whole lot for the whole look of the course and the mechanics are there, but they aren't used in the most clever ways. C tier right behind Mario Circuit. Second in the Leaf Cut, we have the good old Sherbert Land from the GameCube, and it's solid at, at, at best. First off, it looks really nice. I love the dark night sky with the bright blue from the ice and the white from the snow. It all looks great. However, while it may look pretty, there's no real theme to the track. There's ice blocks which stomp down, but what exactly are we doing here? What's the story? It just seems like Nintendo wanted to make an ice course, so they designed a basic skeleton course and slapped on some snow, ice, and a pretty sky to disguise the lack of focus. The course plays alright. The one aspect I really did like though is how many different pathing and shortcuts there are to find. Like there's way more than the typical course, but again, that's all the course is relying on here. There's not much else to it. The music is alright though, it's a light orchestra definitely giving off, you know, Christmas winter vibes, just not very memorable, but it fits the mood really well. While I'm very partial towards nighttime and snow courses in general, because I don't really know, I just like them. Sherbert Land feels a little lazy and honestly the only reason I'm not putting it in D tier is because I really just like how it looks and the track deviations also help quite a bit. So into C tier right ahead of Wario Stadium because I like the looks a lot more than Wario. Alright, with the two stinkers out of the way, let's get into the beloved music park from the 3DS. If the name didn't already give it away, yes, this course has a heavy emphasis on music, in particular like band and orchestras. The environment speaks volumes of that and it's sick. I think it takes place in like a mini orchestra or something like that or a piano, and there's tons of instruments everywhere and even those giant musical note enemies jumping around which do look pretty cool actually. The music is great, as it should be, it is called Music Park after all. It's basically a full-blown orchestra and sounds really nice since the instruments take center stage in the music. Similar to Electrodome, there's those turns where you'll be on a piano and the keys will play to the song as you're drifting along. Always cool to see that, I do like that feature, wish more courses had that. 
Uh, the course itself plays very smoothly and mostly focuses on these really big, smooth turns. The flying part is pretty cool where you'll need to dodge those super big music notes and they jump up and down making it a little more tricky. Music Park overall is an outstanding example of a course excelling without really being tied to the Mario or Nintendo name in any way. It has a super unique environment, music that is mainly focused on the instruments seen in the course, smooth gameplay, and an even smoother decision put it in A tier right behind Rainbow Road. When I told you we got the two stinkers out of the way in the Leaf Cup, I may have lied a little bit about the next course, Yoshi's Valley. It's not that the course is bad, no no no. It's freaking great! Haha, <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? The biggest X factor as to why I love Yoshi's Valley is the course design. When I talked about, you know, track deviations and shortcuts in the past, this brings it to a whole new level. I mean, just take a look at the minimap, it's kind of insane. Each lap is just one huge jumbled mess of intertwining paths and I love it. Each lap feels fresh because you have the choice of riding through a cave, launching out of a cannon, or taking the standard route if there even is one, I don't really know if there is. The best way to describe the music here is it's kind of like Yoshi's version of Wario's Goldmine if that makes sense, which is absolutely a good thing, a little foreshadow to Wario's Goldmine by the way. It's super fast, has a rural type of sound to it, and incorporates a Yoshi type theme. The environment is also great as it takes place in a wild Yoshi sanctuary, with Yoshis all around and even cooler, there's giant Yoshi eggs too, which again, is pretty cool. Yoshi's Valley's strongest aspect is the branching path uh, track design, but it absolutely is helped by the happy easygoing Yoshi soundtrack, the super nice sanctuary feel, and an overall just happy, good feel, fun ride. B tier right behind Wildwoods. Onward from the Egg Cup to the Lightning Cup, and starting off we got Tic Tac Clock hailing all the way from the Nintendo DS. This course takes place in a giant grandfather clock I'm pretty sure, and it shows there's gears, cogs, clock hands, and pocket watches littered around everywhere. Similar to Wario Stadium, personally, I'm not crazy about the clock aesthetic, but I can't deny it fits the name well. I also want to point out that the music fits the theme too, it's fast paced and keeps the tempo of a ticking clock, but again, I just don't really vibe with it to be honest. When it comes out the course plays, well it plays fine, just lacking in a few areas. The flying part is pretty mid, and I can't really remember any other solid sequences, but if I have to pick one it's probably the ticking clock hand that moves around on the track, so that makes timing your drift a little more tricky, yet rewarding I guess, because if you hit the clock hand you can get a speed boost. If you miss it, well, you don't get an optional speed boost. There's also these gear-like treadmills which offer a nice alternative to uh, the traditional speed boost. TikTok Clock is not a bad course, but it's not great. The theme and music fit the name, but I wasn't crazy about them even if they do succeed in that area. The course design is nothing to write home about, and there's a whole lot of mid sprinkled with a few bright spots. C tier right above Sherbert Land because it has a distinct theme and runs with it. Alright guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat this one, Piranha Plant Slide sucks. It's not F tier, but I just hate this course. The premise sounds cool, you're exploring the inside of a Piranha Plant tube, but that novelty soon wears off in my opinion. I love when tracks go fast, if they warrant it, and this one goes fast just to go fast. One spot in particular when you enter the first tube, it's super packed and congested, but there's boosts everywhere. Like, why? The environment is already challenging, so why add boosts? I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It may also be just because I'm shit at the chorus, and hey, that's more of the reason for me to hate it. The music is alright. I picked up snippets from the 2D Mario platformer games, which is kind of cool. The water section is also nice and adds some more open track to race on. I don't know, guys. I just have a personal vendetta against this chorus. I'm just not good at it. The track is cheeky at times. The music is alright. The premise is cool. But it's a one-way ticket to D tier right behind Mario Circuit, because at least in Mario Circuit, you can see where you're going. Okay, okay, hear me out. I know I'm gonna upset some people here, but I think Grumble Volcano is a terrible course and I dislike everything about it. Let's start with the theme. And well, there really is no theme besides the volcano. That's all. Now I've already talked about how tracks like Music Park or Wild Woods can take a boring or simple concept, like a tree or just music in general, but inject a ton of stimulus to make it feel alive and vibrant. And Grumble Volcano just does none of that. It's not like I hate volcanoes or anything, hell I love the volcano in Bowser's Castle. I just knew the potential that they could have reached with this course, and it feels like Nintendo did the bare minimum. The music is probably the best part, but I still hate it. It sounds right, it fits in, but it's hardly able to carry an already themeless course. Oh yeah? How does it play you must be wondering? 
well, exactly like you would expect. Some fireballs, more fireballs, and hey, get this, what about even more fireballs? And if that's not enough, well, there's even sections of the track that break apart and fall into lava. I know, wild, right? I know I'm not giving this course enough credit, but screw that, I wanna dislike it, so I'ma dislike it. Sometimes it's fun to hate, you know? Well, I mean, this is a fictional racing course in a cartoon video game, so it's not that serious, but damn it, I hate it with every fiber of my body. Easiest F tier of my life, but don't worry, there's one other that is even worse, so stay tuned. You know, it's actually pretty funny going from an F tier to, guess what? My favorite course in the entire game. Yes, I'm talking about Rainbow Road from the Nintendo 64. Now, similar to Grumble, I know this is not the most popular take or the most unique course in the bunch, but damn it, I love everything about it. The music from this course being remastered sounds so good. In my opinion, it is by far the best music across all Rainbow Roads, and hell, in this game even. Maybe the Wii Rainbow Road can give it a run for its money, but considering it's not in the game yet, Rainbow Road will hold that crown. The environment is freaking sick as well. Takes place in space obviously, but just below you, you can see this huge city lit up by distant lights. There's fireworks shaped as characters going off all around you, massive chomp chomps on the road, and this super cool rainbow train riding around the course throwing coins. It's a nice little touch. It also plays extremely well. Listen, I'll admit that diversity in the course mechanics and variety may be a little shallow here, but if you've been watching this whole time, you know how much I love those long, smooth, massive drifts. And this course has two of the best turns in the entire game. Yeah, I went there by the way. They are massive, epic, and just super satisfying to pull off. Rainbow Road for the 64 is the pinnacle of Rainbow Roads, nay? The pinnacle of all Mario Kart 8 courses. Until I'm proven otherwise, looking at you Mario Kart Wii, next booster pack please. It has the best music in the entire game, smoothest feel in the entire game, one of the best looking environments, and it's just damn satisfying to race through one giant lap. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that is one lap as opposed to three, which definitely helped this course. Easiest double S tier ever at the very top, and no, it will not be dethroned. Moving on to the Triforce Cup, we have another Warrior course, and Warrior courses are a bit hit or miss for me, but Warrior's Goldmine is definitely a hit. I have really fond memories playing this course on the Wii, and I am super glad it made its way into Mario Kart 8. First off, the music in this course is god tier. If you've made it this far in the video, and hey, thanks by the way, you'll know just how great the soundtrack is. It's a super fast paced, kind of hillbilly mining vibe, and it works wonders. The environment is riddled with moving mine cards, bats everywhere, and it just looks like a rickety old mine, which makes sense considering it's Mario's gold mine. I like how the course plays even more than the music and theme. It's a ton of fun. There's tons of these massive hills, a great anti-grav section when you're weaving between minecarts, and some all-around great turns when you're outside the mine. There's also a super fun shortcut in the mine section that spices it up a bit. The laps are pretty long actually, but it's definitely not a bad thing as each section can hold its own and is super enjoyable. Warrior's Goldmine has stellar music, fast and fun vertical course design, and just a little bit, maybe a lot of nostalgia for my end. Easy S tier right behind Toad's Harbor. Next up we got another great course and that would be, yes, another Rainbow Road and don't worry there are more to come. This one came from the SNES and has aged really well actually. Music is really catchy here, actually surprisingly catchy. Similar to other Rainbow Roads, it has an electronic synth wave type of feel. The environment's a little dull though, there are just a few neon mounds or whatever they are around in the background. But the track itself, like the actual Rainbow Track, pops per usual. What I really like about the course design here is just how rigid and geometric the layout is. The entire course is mostly 90 degree turns, which makes sense for the SNES, but also feels good today. It forces you to always kind of be on your toes and Given that there are no guardrails, you're definitely going to need to watch your speed going into some of those turns. Trust me, I know from experience. The SNES Rainbow Road is super fun, but can be punishing, which is a strength actually. The music is great, I love the rigid nature of the turns, the colors pop, but I do wish there was a little more added to the track to make it, you know, stand out more. A tier right behind Dragon Driftway. Alright, coming in at number 3 for the Triforce Cup, we got Ice Ice Outpost. Now, originally, before I started playing all the courses for this kind of review ranking video, I thought it was an average course. But boy was I wrong, this shit goes crazy. Like the name implies, the course takes place on an outpost in the middle of the Arctic. 
There are tons of snow, glaciers all around, and even a cool helicopter filming you the entire time with tons of fans crowded around you as well. And let me just say this once, if you're playing Mario Kart with a friend or an enemy of any sort and you need a course to duke it out 1v1 one -one style, there is no better option than Isis Outpost. The entire course is split between a green and yellow path and I love this. The track plays fast, the turns are difficult, the anti-grav sections are fun, and the two tracks almost have an inverse relationship at some points that make it super interesting. The music also, guys it just goes crazy. See I brought up the 1v1 analogy because of the splitting tracks but also the music. Immediately playing it I got Pokemon Duel vibes from the music, it's upbeat, fast, and kind of just gets you in the mood to mess up whoever you're racing against. Ice Ice Outpost surprised me with just how much fun it is. It leaned into the actual race aspect as opposed to, you know, a more fun and immersive track. The music goes hard, the track is unique, it plays fast, the environment is desolate, and it's an extremely easy S tier right behind Bowser's Castle. To finish off the Triforce Cup, of course it's gonna be Hyrule Circuit from the Legend of Zelda series. Now, you guys know by now I'm not afraid to shy away from my biases, but I love Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, so I love this course. I just do. The environment is sick, it takes place right outside of Hyrule Castle. You'll ride through the town, fly into the castle, then back out the end through the Deku Piranha Plant things. I don't actually know the name, okay? There's just so much detail and it's nice seeing Hyrule actually alive and well as opposed to how it's usually in ruins or something during the games. The music also goes insanely hard. It's like a hard rock remix of Zelda's Lullaby, and it is hype as hell, it's loud, fast, and just kind of sends shivers down my spine. Hey, I like Zelda, okay? The course itself plays very well too. I don't know if it's just me, but this one's pretty tricky. In fact, the Triforce Cup in general is actually probably the hardest cup in the game. You guys let me know. I think it probably is. And I know I've talked about tight turns a lot so far, but this really takes us to a whole new level. There are a ton of them. Like, a lot. Hyrule Circuit has probably the most immersive environment I've seen yet. The music goes insanely hard. Probably rivals Bowser's Castle in my opinion. The track is difficult. And hey, it's based on Zelda. So it's going straight into A tier right behind Mute City. Okay guys, onto the Bell Cup now. And hey, we're halfway done. Let's keep it going, yeah, with Neo Bowser City from the 3DS. First things first, the music in the course is pretty damn solid, it's like this techno futuristic feel, and it fits in with the cyberpunk Blade Runner aesthetic of the course really well. It's a nighttime course so there's huge neon buildings, it's raining everywhere, and actually thinking about it, not many courses have rain in it, and I don't know if any do besides this one, so that's pretty unique about the course at least. Where this course kind of falters for me is the track design. I love the verticality aspect of it, you know, being able to climb up and down the buildings is cool. But again, it feels a little cheeky at times. The track is super twisty and turns are really tight. And sometimes it's actually kind of hard to know where you're supposed to be going because the sight lines are really narrow. At least in Hyrule Circuit, the difficulty was okay because the music and environment picked up the weight. But considering it's just a neon city, Neo Bowser just doesn't have that luxury. Neo Bowser City has above average music, a cool theme and look to it, but falls a little short when it comes to the actual design of the track itself. C tier right behind TikTok Clock because it had a more unique theme. Next up we got Ribbon Road and this one's kind of mid to be honest. Starting on a positive note though, the environment and theme is super cool. I think it's set in like a miniature racing game and around the track you'll actually see huge versions of the carts in the game which was a pretty cool nice touch. But besides that, the colors pop, the background is a playroom, and it's just some nice eye candy overall. The music is okay, just kind of average, but fits the playroom theme pretty well. For me, Ribbon Road kind of fell short in the course design aspect, like many courses before it and many more to come in the future. It's just kind of boring. Sure, the track bobbles up and down like a ribbon, which is kind of cool, but it's just more bland racing. There's nothing special to keep me coming back to it. The walking pairs are kind of cool though. I like the theming in Ribbon Road, seeing the life-size Mario Karts are cool, but the lack of special or original ideas in the course feels a little lazy to me and Give me no reason to come back to it. C tier above Neo Bowser because I like the theme more. On to Super Bell Subway and hey, this one's a lot better than the previous two. You guessed it, this course takes place in a subway, which may sound unoriginal or boring, but damn is it fun. First off, the music is great and matches the hectic, crazy commotion usually found in train stations. It's like the super sped up, energetic lo-fi, but gives off busy city vibes, which help the course a lot. The environment is nothing to write home about, but 
having to dodge cars and trains in a really tight space make it actually feel like a crowded and bustle in subway station. Unlike Ribbon Road and Neo Bowser, which faltered in course design, Super Bell Subway pops off in that department. The best aspect is how many course deviations there are. You can take the normal route, maybe an anti-grav banking on the surrounding wall, or maybe even above the entire course itself. It literally has it all. The crazy, hectic, and crowded nature of Super Bell Subway sells the theme of the course, but it's also helped quite a bit by the great music choice and the unique track deviations that are present here. A tier right behind the SNES Rainbow Road. Okay, okay, we got another F-Zero course here with Big Blue, and I better not be alone here, but this course is fucking sick. Similar to Mute City, the music here slaps. Again, it's this super futuristic and techno beat, and it just sounds hype as hell, I gotta be honest. The environment is equally badass with the idea of you going down this giant futuristic like water slide with a beautiful sunny sky and a giant ocean, lake, or pond, or whatever it is below you. Big Blue also excels in the track design as well. It's one giant lamp which offers a ton of different mechanics through each section, it plays super fast which I love when it's appropriate, and it incorporates these treadmills again which make for a fun natural speed boost. Everything about Big Blue screams fast and bad ass. Holistically, Big Blue is an all around phenomenal course. The music is hard and hits, the environment does a nice job at complimenting the name, the track variety is definitely there, and it's an easy choice to put it at the top of A tier above Moo Moo Meadows. I know, the cows only carry it so far, I'm sorry. Alright guys, we finally made it through the original tracks. Now it's time to tackle the DLC courses. First would be Paris Promenade, 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 the Golden Dash Cup. Just to clarify for future Mario Kart Tour courses, I tried my best to give them a fair shake, and I did, and I do look at a couple of them, so if it feels like I'm constantly ranking them a little lower than you think they should be, well the biggest reason would be, generally speaking, they may be a great course, but not a great Mario Kart 8 course. I'll explain in further detail for each course though as we come to it. So yeah, back to Paris. The music here really caught me off guard because it is great. It's catchy, sounds French, which is the most important thing, and kind of reminded me of Ratatouille, which is a good thing. I love that movie, by the way. Seeing iconic structures like the Eiffel Tower is cool, but that's where the praise for this course ends. Again, the Eiffel Tower is cool, but doesn't Paris have more to offer than bland, tannish buildings everywhere? I would think so, but it's not showcased here. The buildings all look the same, there are some cool founds, and the road looks kind of cool, but like, if the road is the coolest part of the environment, then what does that say about the entire course itself? It's also pretty boring to drive on, there's branching paths like most tour courses, but there's nothing special about each path, so why even include them? The first DLC course may have been a stinker due to its lazy environment, lack of standout French artifacts, and nothing special about how it plays, but hey, the road is cool. C tier right above Ribbon Road just because the music actually slaps here. Yeah, for the second course I'm gonna need to stay on the negativity bandwagon here because Toad Circuit from the 3DS does not hold up in any way, shape, or form. It's just really, really, really lame. The environment is just green grass with a few plants, toad houses, and a crowd. The music is okay. Everything is just extremely forgettable. See, I'm here writing the script right now and you know it is not a good sign when I have to go back and check the VOD again to even remember what the course was even about. FYI, all the best courses, I don't even need to consider that, I know it by heart. The best thing I can say about Toad Circuit is there is a giant hot air toad balloon, which is nice to look at, but even that is made considering the set pieces and other courses far outshine it. At least Paris had music on the Eiffel Tower, this just has a toad. D tier right behind Piranha Plant Slide because at least that had an interesting environment to it. Okay, with the two stinkers out of the way, and wait, hey, have you noticed that too? The more often than not, if a cup has a shitter or two in it, they're usually the first or second course in the cup? I don't know, maybe that's just me. Right though, Choco Mountain from Nintendo 64 is making a return, and well, it's, it's a nice time. I believe you're driving through like a chocolate looking mound, and the music is the strongest point of this course. It's again one of those fast paced, hillbilly, mountaineer vibes with a ton of banjo, and just a fun song to listen to. The environment is okay, it's pretty bland to be honest, and there's not much to look at other than the brown chocolate mound. The course feels and plays very nicely though. The turns feel good, the boulders and bats are fair enemies, and I have no real complaints about how it feels to play other than I wish it had a bit more oomph to it. Choco Mound is one of those courses that doesn't suck, but it's not going to be your favorite course. Hey, unless it is, then more power to you. I respect it. Unfortunately, I lack any nostalgia to help this one out, so straight into B tier behind Yoshi Circuit, because I like Yoshi more. 
The saving grace of the Super Bell Cup is here, and that would be thanks to the very special course that is Coconut Mall, hailing from the Wii. The music is iconic, the track design is clever, the theming and environment is bright and vibrant. Wait, what am I even doing? We all know Coconut Mall is an instant double S tier right in front of Electrodome. I mean, come on, we all learned this in grade school. It's common knowledge. Coconut Mall's great. On to the Super Cat Cup we go. For our first course, another hailing from Mario Kart Tour, and that would be Tokyo Blur. Now, I don't really know anything about Tokyo. I've never been, though I would love to go. But the music in this course didn't really scream Japanese like Dragon Driftway did, for example. It's a hella cool piano piece, don't get me wrong, but it didn't really fit in with the theme. But hey, who am I to judge when Nintendo's literally based in Japan, so they probably know better than I do. Unfortunately, though, Tokyo falls into the same trap as Paris did, with the environment being super barren. There's a few cool monuments here and there, but not enough to speak volume. Unlike Paris, which was barren, but at least played okay, I really do not like how Tokyo played at all. There's nothing special about the turns, there's no fun sequences, and it all just feels off and kind of weird to race through. Overall, considering Nintendo's roots are in Japan, I expected a bit more. The music is nice, but doesn't really fit the mood. It feels a little off to play, and the environment just screams of stock overused assets. D tier behind Piranha Plant Slide. On to the second course of the Lucky Cat Cup, we have Shroom Rage. And I don't know what, but Nintendo must have really been tripping when making this course because I am not a fan of it at all. The music is this fancy disco beat, which is okay, but seems a little or a lot out of place. The environment feels like you've been driving on a random highway for like 8 hours and are begging to see something new. Well, tough luck. There is nothing new here. It all looks the same. I guess when it comes to course design, they got inspired by Toad Circuit to not include anything remotely interesting in this course. Yeah, looking at the VOD right now, I can barely keep my eyes open without zoning out. Straight into D tier right behind Toad Circuit because at least they had a hot air balloon toad. This one doesn't really have anything. Now with the two stinkers out of the way, see, I'm telling you, they always put the shitters first. I don't know why. But yeah, we have Sky Garden from the Game Boy Advance. Environment wise, this course actually reminded me of Cloud Top Cruise quite a bit which as a reminder is a great thing. There's a bright blue sky, tons of giant green bean stalks, ships flying around, kubas everywhere, nice flowers, and even some bouncy red mushrooms, which is always a plus. The music complements the cloud-like environment with a super lighthearted, relaxing, and happy feeling that works perfectly music-wise. The course design is also nice. There's these bouncy red mushrooms, a super pretty and fun flying section, but other than that, it's pretty basic, I'm not gonna lie. It feels great to play, don't get me wrong, but Lax, you know that killer interesting mechanic that a lot of other courses have that makes them stand apart. Sky Garden's stellar visuals are definitely a strongest point. It just looks so damn nice. Mm -mm -mm. The music complements as well with its upbeat vibe but does lack in track variety and mechanics. Solid B tier right behind Royal Raceway due to the better theming in my opinion. Saving the best for last, we have the super cool ninja themed course called Ninja Hideaway and damn this one's pretty dope, if I do say so myself. Let me just say the design and mechanics of this course is off the charts. The flying section is sick, the actual dojo has tons of hidden passages, the outside section is diverse, and all that combined makes for a jam-packed, super complex race. The environment also takes it to the next level. There are shy guys practicing their ninja skills, awesome and detailed murals, and the dojo itself looks like a dojo if Shy Guys were to run it, I guess, but hey, it looks pretty cool. To top it off though, the music is also great. It's hyper fast and kind of reminds me of like Kung Fu Panda or something like that because Ooh, it fits the Asian down. ninja <laughs> theme perfectly. Lots of flutes and winds, I love to see it. You know, the Lucky Cat Cup is pretty mid overall, but you cannot count Ninja Hideaway as being mid. The track is super complex, the environment is detailed and lively, the music is true to the theme, and it's just so much fun racing through the crazy dojo. A tier right behind Shy Guy Falls. New cup, new course, and this time we're starting off with yet another Mario Kart Tour course, and in this case, I hope you stick around for the next minute or two because we're talking about New York Minute. Okay, that wasn't that clever, but I think there was something there. Music here is actually super solid, love the jazz vibe to it, and it does a great job at representing New York City. The background is also somewhat appealing. This is a nighttime course, which is a plus for me. But there's New York skyscrapers everywhere, with bright lights resembling those of Times Square, which is a nice touch. I think the biggest problem with tour courses in general is they're trying too hard to resemble the city they represent instead of prioritizing 
interesting and fun gameplay, even if that means stretching the believability aspect a little bit. In New York Minute, you'll drive through Central Park, but there's just nothing to look at besides trees and Goombas and it plays boring. It's tight to be tight and offers only one good sequence at the end, where you drive through a Broadway-like theater. Other than that, it's pretty simple and barren. New York Minute does a better job at making the environment interesting, but still falls a little flat when it comes to integrating interesting elements into the track. C tier right ahead of Paris because it had that one fun part at the end. Aha! Another Mario Circuit, this time the SNES version, and does it disappoint like the previous two? Well, bad news because Mario Circuit 3 disappoints me in that it should be getting way more love than I gave it prior. Aha, gotcha, didn't I? Maybe not, probably not, but I liked it. The music in this course is honestly really iconic. If I'm going to point to one music track from earlier games that set a precedent for Mario Kart music in the future, it has to be this one. It's catchy, fast, and frankly, I think it's the formula for all future Mario Kart tracks, and it shows. The environment is pretty simple, kind of resembles Donut Plains 3 in that regard, but considering it is an SNES course, I vibe with it. The track itself has a ton of these really big U-turns, which are really fun and add some spice to an already pretty simple course design. Frankly, Mario Circuit 3 doesn't impress me from its smooth track design, its retro environment, the SNES throwback, or even the smooth U-turns. No, no, no. The music carries this track all the way into A tier right behind Super Bell Subway. Moving on to another throwback course called Calamari Desert from the Nintendo 64, which is another desert course. The premise of the course is you're out in the desert in the middle of nowhere and there's a train passing by and you're racing next to it. I don't know guys, don't ask me to explain it, it doesn't make sense. It looks the part, the environment is basically barren and desolate as the theme and name imply. The music also does a nice job at encompassing that old western cowboy feel. I don't know, kind of made me feel like Arthur Morgan or something in Red Dead Robin a Train, which is a good thing by the way. The track itself also plays like an old western train robbery. You'll both be chasing a train and then getting chased, which is a nice change of pace. The track also changes in between laps a little bit, which is a nice refresh from the already pretty simple track design. I love any time you're having to dodge or steer away from the train. I don't know, it's just kind of a cool idea and I'm glad they included it. Calamari Desert is a fun and immersive desert course. The music gives off a killer western feel, the train constantly chugging along heightens the stakes, and the course changing up in between laps is a much needed jolt to the simple course design. It's a solid B tier course right in front of the Chaco Mountain. Lastly, but not finally, we have a lot more to go. We have the beloved course from the DS and that would be Waluigi's Pinball. Listen, there's not much to add that already hasn't been said. This course is freaking brilliant in every single aspect. The music slaps. I'm sure you already know the one I'm talking about, but it's like the synthwave electronic bop and it is extremely catchy. Like, beware, that shit can get stuck in your head for hours. Trust me, I've been through it unfortunately. Great song, too catchy though. The environment also excels here. The bright neon lights look awesome, especially on an OLED screen. The pinball area specifically looks unlike any other course in Mario Kart, and the tunnel where you start is probably the greatest start to any Mario Kart course, period. I don't know, it reminded me of Star Wars and Lightspeed, so I think it's pretty cool. I love Star Wars, by the way. Just not the sequel trilogy all that much, but that is a whole nother video. Oh, and I forgot to mention, of course it plays great. The pinballs are dynamic, the turns feel awesome, and it uses flying when appropriate really well. Waluigi's Pinball is a great example of how to design and execute a really cool niche theme and take it to the next level. Easy S tier finally surpassing Toad's Harbor. Okay, let's sprint into the Propeller Cup and start with our first track, Sydney Sprint, another tour course. But hey, I actually enjoyed this one. I don't really know what Australian music would even sound like, but if the music in this course is actually Australian, then book me a ticket to Sydney because I was vibing with it the entire time, even if it may sound like a happy summer mix you can find on YouTube. I won't mention that though. The environment is also pretty solid since there's actual things to look at like the Sydney Opera House, tons of Ferris wheels and rides, a huge ocean, and most importantly, buildings that don't all look the same. Tokyo and Paris, by the way. The track design is also pretty enjoyable. Each section that splits off between laps is pretty unique and takes you through a new part of Sydney you haven't already seen before. There's also a nice touch where on the final lap you go back the way you came. I don't know, I'm just a fan of that in general. If the course is interesting, which Sydney is, so it works out. Sydney Sprint accomplishes what some other tour courses fail to do. Provide a lively and exciting environment, music that fits the theme, and solid course mechanics that change as the new sections are introduced. 
B tier right behind Dolphin Shoals. Alright guys, we got another snow course, and this time we got Snowland from the Game Boy Advance. And am I the only one who thinks they could have come up with a more interesting name for the course? I don't know, why not just call it Snow if you're calling it just Snowland? I don't know, I'm more just kidding around though. I don't really care about the name all that much. I really don't have much to say about this course other than it's just kind of mid. The music is great though, it has an upbeat Christmas vibe to it, which I dig, but similar to Sherbert Land, that's kind of all it has going for it. You're really just going to be driving around on ice the entire time. Sure, there's penguins, which spice it up a little bit, but if that's all that's going for it, well, then it's a bit lacking. Once again, winter courses have the potential to pop off, and one does in the future. Guess what that is? I really do love the winter setting, though, but Snowland is not the chosen one to accomplish that. The music is great, but the environment is boring, and the course lacks any semi-interesting mechanics, besides those penguins, of course. Straight into C tier right behind Sherbert Land because I like the nighttime setting more. Here we go again, one more time now with the two stinkers out of the way, let's move on to the next course which is Mushroom Gorge. And guys, I don't mean to scare you here, but I may very well have a stroke if anyone watching this video right now doesn't instantly put it where it belongs. In S tier baby. Starting off with the music, I mean what more needs to be said, it's a bop, extremely catchy and fits the bouncy mushroom theme perfectly. If that's even a theme or thing, I don't really know, you tell me. The course itself is my favorite part though, being able to bounce around basically the entire time is more than enough for an S tier placement, even if that is kind of the only mechanic. In particular, the part in the cave is just awesome and having the optional blue mushroom to get you gliding is a nice addition over the Wii version. So yeah, you know where I stand with Mushroom Gorge, it's awesome. The music goes hard, the bouncing mechanics kind of carry the course, the environment is fine. But when all is said and done, those damn trampolines catapulted straight into S tier right behind Wario's Goldmine. To add a cherry on top to the already amazing and stellar Mushroom Gorge, we're now on to one of my most recent favorites, which may be a little bit of a hot take, Sky High Sunday. Everything about this course just breathes, you know, messy, disorganized, and none of it makes sense, but that's why I love it. The entire track design is another giant oval, but you start to descend on one side, then climb on the other side, then back to descending. Let me just say, climbing specifically is super fun. There's tons of these jumps where you can speed boost, and it's just really fun and satisfying. The music and environment are also stellar. I don't know how else to describe the music other than it's like a great climbing song. The music is primarily this orchestra laced with drums, and I really dig it. It's fast, wacky, and kind of resembles what a six-year-old would be like on a Mad Sugar High. Oh yeah, the environment is also super sick too. Imagine an ice cream powered unicorn or something shitting all over the place. Well, that's this course. It's super bright, there's tons of pastels, ice cream is everywhere, and the track is like a candy or cone texture, and it all just works really well together. Sky High Sunday has become one of my favorite courses in recent memory just because of how it bucks the trend of basic Mario Kart courses. Nothing about Sky High makes sense, and it really doesn't, but that's why I love it. It's fast, fun, and the music slaps, the environment is great, and it'll slide its way easily into A tier right behind Hyrule Circuit. After that sugar high from Sky High Sunday, well, here comes the crash covering the first course in the Rock Cup, London Loop. Now I know London is well known for the rock culture, but man, I just wasn't vibing with the music to be honest. I was expecting, you know, something a little more prim and proper, you know, royalty and all that, but Hey, the rock route fits the city, I just wasn't crazy about the direction that Nintendo took the music. Similar to Paris, you'll see cool structures like the Big Ben or the London Eye, but guess what? That's all about it. And guys, I'm talking about the showstoppers here. I'm sure there's other little additions that relate to London, but I'm not British and frankly don't care enough to find them, and I really shouldn't need to, to be honest. Credit where credit is due though, the regular buildings do look pretty nice and are different from each other. Unlike Paris. However, this course really just pissed me off for some reason. I think the reason I dislike it is because it's super overly complicated and it's hard to actually see where you need to go. You can't just look at the mini map because there's physical barricades that show up to block routes and it's not on the map. So you have to follow these holographic arrows, which I don't know if it's just me. I wish instead they would just put a physical barrier. It would be a lot easier to see. Sometimes it's hard for me to see exactly where I can and can't go. I really just don't like this course because I can't see where I'm going, which is kind of a big issue. So I'm putting it straight to the bottom of C tier, barely squeaking by, by the way. 
Alright, it's been a bit since we last talked about a boot course, but rest assured this one is much better than Twisted Mansion. Naturally, this one was ported from the Game Boy Advance, so the course design will be a little more simple compared to modern day courses, but I don't think it matters all that much. This course takes place in a lake and you'll be driving around on top of piers for one half, but the other half you'll be driving on sunken piers in the lake itself. The environment is again simple, but gets this point across. You're basically surrounded by these creepy trees at night and it's fine. It sets the mood well. Similar to the environment though, the music also does a fine job. It's not obnoxious like Twisted Mansion, instead it's a bit more ambient focus which I actually liked. The course plays really well too, the turns are nice, the anti-grav section is a nice precursor to the water, and yeah the water section is actually really fun and is the highlight for me. You'll see the sunken pier with these dry bone fish things and it looks and sounds all great. I like Booz Lake a whole lot more than Twisted Mansion which is why Booz Lake is being put right into B tier behind Sky Garden. True to the Rock Cup name, we now move on to Rock Rock Mountain from the 3DS. Similar to Sky High Sunday in some ways, Rock Rock Mountain is another climbing type course and I loved it. The music works really well here, similar to Sky High. It's a great climbing vibe, but instead of that sugary sweet energy, there's a rock and roll twist that fits perfectly. The environment is also super nice. You'll race through a bland cliffside, then fly through a super unique forest area, it all looks great. When it comes to how the course plays, well, it's brilliant. The flying section in particular is super cool where the backdrop is a massive forest and you'll have to weave in between all those giant green tubes. Definitely the highlight for me, by the way. The waterfall is also super fun, just think of Shy Eye Falls for comparison. Overall, I love these ascend and descend type of courses and in Rock Rock Mountain, it works great yet again. The environment changes and looks great, the track itself plays beautifully, and the music fits the theme really well, and it'll roll its way right to the very top of B tier for how fun the climb aspect is. Finally, we have the one and only Maple Tree Way. Now you may remember not so long ago, about an hour and 15 minutes to be exact, I teased it as an F tier course, and well, it's not actually F tier, I was just pulling your leg a bit, it's pretty good though. I think the factor I like most about this course is how visually appealing it is. Like, I mean, I gotta ban us, it just looks good. The fall aesthetic mixed with orange and red leaves falling everywhere, a beautiful backdrop, and the tree which has the orange tint to it, again, just looks really nice. The music is actually pretty solid too. It features a kazoo or something like that. I mean, guys, if you haven't noticed, I'm not the best with identifying instruments, so I'm trying my best here, so bear with me. But yeah, it's a really nice orchestra and it's light and it fits the fall mood really well. The track plays great too. Lots of diverse mechanics like jumps, flying, and anti-grav. The wigglers are also a nice touch. Some turns are a little tricky due to no guardrails, but nothing unfair in my opinion. I really love Maple Tree for how it looks, sounds, and plays, and it's all above average in my opinion. Straight into A tier behind Super Bell Subway because I like how Subway races more. Five more cups to go and starting with the Moon Cup is yet another tour course, this one being Berlin Byways. First things first, music here is great. I mean imagine if like Kratos from God of War was riding in on a M1 Abrams battle tank into war, this is the music that would play, it's pretty epic man. Similar to other tour courses though, Berlin starts to falter a little bit with everything else. The environment is definitely more dynamic than Paris and New York, but I just don't think the various areas speak volumes. Again, I appreciate more diversity in course aesthetics in Berlin, I just didn't think they really looked that good. The course doesn't play very well either, the track is crowded and convoluted, the turns are actually sometimes not well designed and break the flow of regular racing, and there wasn't really anything special about it. The best compliment I can give Berlin is for the epic music, but that's about it. The environmental variations are nice, but the track design and fun factor fall way short in my opinion. C tier above New York because the music here is so damn good. Up next we have a beloved classic hailing from the Nintendo DS and of course that would be none other than Peach's Garden. I love the theme of this course, it takes place in Peach's Garden, it make, makes sense right? But everything from the well maintained hedges, the nice looking flower beds, the massive Peach and Luigi hedges, and the white track tiles all scream Princess Peach vibes. I also love the music here, and it fits Peach perfectly, tons of high pitched violins and pianos make for a very royal like sound and it works wonders for this course. Even better than the environment and music is the track design, I love it. You'll be hitting some awesome turns trying to dodge hedges, you'll race through a giant maze guarded by chomp chomps. In the final lap, you actually reverse directions, which offer a whole new perspective, 
which is pretty cool. Shout out to the Luigi Hedge, by the way. Peach's Garden is a masterclass in how to theme a course around a character. You implement complementary music, inject simple and fun mechanics while spicing it up with a final reverse slap, all while making you feel like you're actually in Peach's Garden, not just any garden. A tier right behind Animal Crossing because, I mean, it's Animal Crossing. Remember when I said Snowline was not the chosen one to end the Draw to Midwinter courses? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got it. Merry Mountain. Not only does it have my two favorite track aesthetics combined, Nighttime and Snow, but it's also Christmas themed too. Everything from Santa's Village to climbing the Epic Mound, seeing presents everywhere, a toad powered Christmas train, then flying off the mound, seeing the town, and even a toad Christmas sleigh, and gondolas carrying more presents back up the mound, it all looks amazing. The music is also amazing too. It's warm, fuzzy, festive, and gives off that Xmas vibe perfectly. And hey, remember when I said I love those Ascend and Descend courses? Well, Merry Mount has that as well. Drifting through the town, then climbing the mound, then speeding down and flying, seeing everything around you is super satisfying. The anti-grav sections are great. There's some really good shortcuts. The flying is amazing. Everything just works really well here. Merry Mountain is a prime example of the potential winter courses can achieve that no other course really can. The theming is off the charts. The music works wonders here. The gameplay is innovative and fits the name. Everything here just works and meshes together really well, more than most courses can. A tier right behind Chai Guy Falls. To round out the Moon Cup, we have none other than, of course, Rainbow Road from the 3DS. I want to just say right off rip, this is the best looking Rainbow Road track we have gotten. Yes, I'm even including my all time favorite Rainbow Road 64 in that bunch. I don't know what they did, but goddamn does it look great. It's like uh, this rainbow gradient, but it has this like volume to it by having an ever flowing particle like effect. I mean, just look at it, it looks super cool. And guys, the environment in this course is just freaking epic too. There's giant planets all around you, stars everywhere, galaxies to be seen, and it all just looks super galactic. I don't know, I fuck with it heavy to be honest. The music here is, of course, amazing. I think it's kind of a remix from all the other Rainbow Road soundtracks, but it blends and flows great. Probably the reason it's so great is it pulls from the 64 track. Of course it does. We all know that's the best music in the game. I just wanted to remind you really quick. Also, it plays even better too. Everything from casually riding on the road, riding on freaking planet rings, tons of speed boosts, one giant lap, and you even get to drive on a planet or meteor or comet or whatever the hell it is. Whatever it is, it's awesome and super cool. Rainbow Road for the 3DS is hands down my favorite Rainbow Road, except for the 64 version, of course. The track is the best looking out of the bunch, the music is off the charts, the mechanics are amazing and it's an extremely easy S tier course, finally surpassing the late and great Waluigi's Pinball. All right, I hope you're feeling a little fruity because the first course in the Fruit Cup is Amsterdam Drift from Mario Kart Tour. I actually don't think Amsterdam is really related to fruit. Instead, they should have put it in the Mushroom Cup if they were trying to be accurate to the city, but hey, I digress. Off rip, this course is a lot more fun than I thought it would be, starting with the music, this may be one of, if not the only track with distinct vocals in it, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I really like the Dutch vibe with the vocals, very on par with Amsterdam. Even better, the environment was super vibrant and alive, everything from the pretty looking canals to the field of tulips to the even multicolored pastel buildings. There's environmental diversity, which many other tour courses lack, and courses in general. Gameplay wise, it's also solid. Being able to escape the city and drive through a farm, the canals, or the field of flowers is a nice change of pace from the city. Even if those unique sections play very average, the change in environment goes a long way. Amsterdam Drift is another great example of how to do a city course justice. The music fits the country, the city has diversity, you race outside the city at times, and it actually provides a solid reason to switch up the route like all tour courses do. B tier right behind Wild Woods. Yeah, see guys, I, I, I can like a tour course here and there, okay? Sydney and Amsterdam, they're pretty solid. Next up in the Fruit Cup is Riverside Park from the Game Boy Advance, and this one's okay. The environment takes place in a Riverside Park, and it looks pretty nice. Similar to Maple Treeway, there's a really nice looking golden sunset combined with the river and the surrounding forest. It all just looks good combined. The music also complements the theme well by being a sort of like jungle forest theme, and it's okay, nothing to scoff at nor get hyped about. Where the course starts to fall short for me is how it plays, which is barely average in my opinion. You'll be racing up a little mound then flying off it. 
And even with more simple track designs like Donut Plains or Mario Circuit 3, for example, they feel good to play, but it just feels off here. I don't know if it's how the course is structured, the lack of diversity in mechanics, or the simple nature of it, but I felt like it was lackluster and wasn't overly enjoyable in any way. Riverside Park has a great theme, environment, and music which carries it far but can't pick up the weird feeling and simple course design into a higher tier. I really wanted to like this course more, but it disappoints me. B tier behind Dolphin Shoals. Third up in the Fruit Cup, we have DK Summit, and good news, this one's pretty great. The idea is you're launched up to a top of a ski slope and then you have to race down it through ice turns, packed snow, moguls, and even the half pipe with shy guys skiing around it. And such with the statue of DK by the way, I saw that. The music is also great here, imagine a rock and roll DK song, that's what you get here and it goes hard, but also fits the winter vibe pretty well. Like I said before, playing through the sections of the track is really fun. The moguls offer a ton of boost opportunities, the half pipe is a half pipe and offers tons of opportunities for sick boosts and jumps and the packed snow actually is a great obstacle and you need to watch out for it. DK Summit exceeds expectations in almost every category from the killer music, super fun track mechanics, and a great looking environment. Easy ticket right into A tier behind Peach's Garden because I like the music and reverse slap mechanic there. Yahoo! Finally, we have Yoshi's Island, a brand new course, and guys, I may be a little too bullish on this course, but man, I cannot deny that I love this course after playing it a few times. It's obviously based on the hit game Yoshi's Island, and damn does it do the game justice. The killer aspect for me is the theme in here. Everything from shy guys walking around on stilts, Yoshi's all around jumping and waving, enemies from the games, Yoshi coins, the textures from the games, a bright and colorful background, everything here just looks like it was made with someone who really loved the game. Even better, the music here is awesome and is, of course, ripped and remixed directly from Yoshi's Island itself. Now, I know I've played the song already in this video, but it's a jazzy, fast-paced, fun, light-hearted Yoshi vibe, and it just fits the course perfectly. Go listen to it if you can't remember it off the top of your head. It's awesome, and I love it. The course plays amazingly as well. The underwater section you start off with is great. The turns feel awesome. The flying section's amazing. Riding on the clouds is super cool, and it just all works here. That's the best way I can put it. All right, let's, let's have a heart-to-heart -heart here, okay? Listen up. Here's the hard truth. Yoshi's my favorite character, I love Yoshi Island the game, and I don't care if it may not be on paper the best design course out there. Screw that, Yoshi Island is getting the S tier seal of approval. No, the double S tier and it is going right behind Electrodome and it is not moving. New cup, new course, and this time we have yet another Mario Kart tour track and this one being Bangkok Rush. Now considering I know near nothing about Bangkok, the music I think sounded on par, I don't really know though, but it sounds good, it's busy and has these wacky string instruments in it. They actually sound pretty cool and I don't think I've heard any of them in any track so far. It looks okay as well, I think they were going for a Maple Tree Way Riverside Park Sunset type of look, and I don't mean to disrespect Bangkok here, but honestly it looks like yellowish, ugly smog and I'm not crazy about it. Hey there's some nice looking fireworks going off behind and a pretty skyline though. Plays fine too, there's canals to race through with some cool jumps, riding on top of tents like in Toad Harbor and a decent variety to the mechanics. Overall, Bangkok is just fine. The ambience of the environment doesn't do it for me, but the music, track variety, and environmental diversity is all very average and acceptable, I think. B tier right behind Chaco Mountain. Secondly, we have our final Mario Circuit course. Maybe they should come up with some better names, but hey, whatever. This one's from Nintendo DS, and it may be actually one of my favorite Mario Circuits. I love the transitions between sections on this course. You'll start on a more, you know, traditional pavement road, then move into a dirt section surrounded by tons of trees and wildlife, then to shoot out and fly towards Peach's Castle to then come full circle and finish up on pavement. While you're racing, you're surrounded by that stereotypical Mario 2D look, but with the ocean backdrop, the wood section, and the colors popping, it all looks great. Plays really splendidly as well. The fourth section is congested and tight, dark. The starting pavement section is simple. The ending pavement section involves multiple really fun U-turns in succession, and it's a nice feeling to finish off a lap with that. Oh, and also the flying section is, again, pretty cool and feels awesome. Mario Circuit from the 3DS is a great example of the simple concept for Mario Circuits in general, but adds to the formula to make it a lot more enjoyable. The music fits in, the environment pops and blends well, the track variety is there, and there is zero BS or any annoyance associated with it. A tier right behind Mario Circuit 3 for the iconic music. Alright, coming up third in the Boomerang Cup is Waluigi Stadium, and this one's kinda mid, similar to Wario Stadium. First off, the theme fits Waluigi, which is important. 
The environment is riddled with mud everywhere, tons of piranha plants, a sick half pipe, and steel beams everywhere. Again, very similar in essence to Wario's. Music is fitting as well, really fast, sort of fancy sounding, sounds busy, and fits the gritty muddy feeling really well. The track starts to fall a little short in how it plays though. It just kind of feels like you're driving through mud pits the entire time with the occasional ramp or fireball to dodge, or piranha plant even. There are even some cool uh, overhead shortcuts, but that's about it when it comes to anything unique or interesting. Sure, both the environment and music fit Waluigi as a character, but I just wasn't crazy about either of them. On top of that, the course lacks any super interesting or enjoyable course mechanics besides, you know, the occasional shortcut or deviation. C tier right behind Wario Stadium. Finally, to round out the Boomerang Cup, we have Singapore Speedway. And ladies and germs, brace yourself for impact, we now have the best tour course in the game right here. And boy is it a great fucking time. Let me just say right off, the environment in the city is so freaking cool. It's set at night, which is always a plus, but you'll see Chinatown, a ton of super cool neon buildings, palm trees, bright lights, infinity pools, cool ass bridges, train stations, awesome looking fountains, and yes, even some futuristic Avengers looking windmills. It's all super unique and sets it apart from other courses for having set pieces that other tour courses or tracks in general lack. Music is great as well, fits the city theme well, but nothing to lose your cool over to be honest. The best part about the track by far is how fun it plays though. Sure you stay in the city the entire time, but damn are the sections in each lap really unique and fun. Everything from riding through an infinity pool on a building, to flying around high tech windmills, to even riding on some cool neon bridges. Oh yeah. You remember those super cool treadmill things in Big Blue and Mute City I said I loved? They're here too. It's all just super, super fun to play in my opinion. And it's just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to see and do in this track. Singapore Speedway is by far the best tour course I've raced on. I mean, maybe not by far because Amsterdam and City are solid, but Singapore is clearly the best. Everything from the stunning environment to the super unique and clever use of verticality and track mechanics makes it a banging ass course, in my opinion. First tour course to hit the A tier right behind Maple Tree Away. Two more cups to go, and first up in the Feather Cup, we got Athens Dash from, again, Mario Kart Tour. This one is obviously set in ancient Athens and is pretty solid overall. I love the old historical look to it with columns everywhere, dirt roads to show off the age, and even historical landmarks like the Parthenon. Theme and environment all work really well here to, you know, depict Athens as an ancient city, but personally, again, I'm just not a fan of the tannish brown look, but that's just me. Music is awesome here with a deep historic vibe with lots of deep sounding string instruments and it sounds great. The track itself plays pretty good too. Decent track mechanics and shortcuts combined with unique environmental map sections actually give a reason to switch up the lap direction. It feels very decent to play on and I have no serious gripes with Athens in that regard. Overall, Athens Dash is a respectable tour course and course in general. The environment fits the theme, the music picks it up, and the course diversity is average and it's just a decent track all in all straight into B tier ahead of Bangkok for the better looking environment. Now if any of you have watched my Booster Pack 5 video, you'll know how much I love the second course, Daisy Circuit from the Nintendo GameCube. I think what I love most about the course is the actual location. I mean, you're on a boat. You'll be surrounded by a sunny sky, a giant blue ocean, and seagulls flying all above you. Simple environment, don't get me wrong, but fits the cruise lifestyle perfectly. The music is great and it's a hardcore like Hawaiian beach vibe with tons of bongos and ukulele. And it just gets you in the, you know, that headspace where you're chilling on the beach, sipping on a pina colada or something. It's great. The track plays amazing as well. It's a pretty simple, oval shaped course, but what makes this course special is they add vertical layers to the track. You'll start racing on the main deck, make your way down to the dining room with shifting tables, then either straight back to the main deck or a little underwater shortcut. It all plays really, really fun and adds depth, both figuratively and literally, to the already simple course layout. Daisy's Cruise is just a joy to race on, I gotta be honest. Everything from the lighthearted Hawaiian music to the extra track depth makes it a welcome addition to Mario Kart 8, and I am glad it got resurrected from the depths of Mario Kart Hell. Straight into A tier behind Animal Crossing because, I mean, you know by now, it's Animal Crossing. At number 3 on the list, we have yet another one of my personal favorites from the Wii era, and that would be Moonview Highway. What can I say about this course other than it's just a fun ass time? The course takes place in a nighttime city draped with huge mounds and city lights everywhere, almost like you're driving in a high-tech version of Denver or something like that. I love the background, it looks great. 
The music is also fine here, it accomplishes the mission of, you know, a hectic nighttime highway pretty well in my opinion. And guys, I love how this course plays too, it's just some crazy ass hectic fun, everything from the cars surrounding you when driving, cool surfboard jump cars, bomb cars even, and tons of speed boosts and really nice turns. It all just feels really nice and smooth to play on. Now I'm gonna be honest here once again and put it all right on the table. This is mostly a nostalgia rating, but that doesn't mean Moonview is not deserving. It has a stellar nighttime environment, tricky and dynamic obstacles, and a decent music track, right into B tier behind Rock Rock Mountain. To finish off the Feather Cup, we have another one of my favorite most recent tracks, this one being Squeaky Clean Sprint. I think what made this course stand out to me is kind of just the idea of the course altogether. Essentially, you're shrunk down to a Toy Story size, and you're racing around a regular size, but seems giant bathroom. There's everything from a busy bathroom sink, a giant bubble bath with a Mario rubber ducky, riding on the bubbly and slippery floor, then back up to the towel rack. The music is also very bathroom-like, I don't know. It's a really fast-paced light her vibe, which fits it well. Plays even better too, there's giant flying areas with deviating paths to take, a great underwater section through a drain, a fun slippery bathroom floor, and overall a really smooth feeling course. There's also decent shortcuts as well, one being while flying and another being in the bathroom riding on sponges. Squeaky clean sprint may be Mario Kart's first array into the sublime bathroom scene, but it pulled it off in my opinion. The music works, the environment is stellar, the track plays amazingly, and I love basically everything about this course squeaky clean into A tier right behind Music Park. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna hold back with this one because it is a straight dumpster fire in every single way, shape, and form, and of course I'm talking about the disgrace that is Los Angeles Labs. Where do I even start this course? Well, I mean, I guess I'll start with the environment. You see Paris and New York were bland, but at least they had iconic structures like the Eiffel Tower or Central Park, but hey, you wanna guess what LA gets? Oil rigs and a Ferris wheel. Oh yeah, but I mean, palm trees are pretty cool though. They look nice. Seriously though, maybe I'm slow, but where the hell is the Hollywood sign? Like, how is that not included here? On top of that, the stores and shops here also make Paris seem like an S tier course as well. If you thought those buildings in Paris looked boring, then LA is here to one up you and then some. Literally, there are just a handful of shops that look all the exact same, exact same color, exact same name. And I kid you not, some of them just say marked. The music here even sucks too, which I'm pretty sure it's really hard to do because I'm really tolerant when it comes to music. I know what they were going for with like a funky High Life LA vibe, but it just sounds terrible and ugly in my opinion. Oh yeah, the course plays shitty as well too. There's absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing unique or special about anything here. I'm trying to find a bright spot and, well, I guess there's no other map that has oil rigs, so that's a plus I guess, I don't know. So yeah. I hate LA Labs. It looks like a track you would find in like a free to play mobile game. I mean, I gotta be honest too though, I dislike the actual city for some time now because I think it's kind of a don't, but hey, what do I know? I live in Chicago. Everything here from the terrible music, lazy and not realistic environment, even more lazy gameplay just puts it straight to the very bottom of F tier. Yes, right behind Grumble Volcano because at least that track looks like a volcano. Next up, we got the slightly disappointing Sunset Wilds from the Game Boy Advance. I'll start with the positives here, and that would be the music. It's awesome. It's again one of those super fast hillbilly guitar tracks, and it is really catchy, and it's definitely my favorite music in this cup, and it fits in really well in my opinion. The track also looks okay, definitely gives me Calamari Desert vibes with it, mostly just being Desolate Desert, but like why? It made sense for the theme of Calamari, but what does Sunset Wilds do to warrant? you know, excluding any detail from the background. Personally, I don't think anything, and I wish there was a bit more there. Track also plays mid at best. The turns feel nice and everything works, but like, what is there to do? Sure, there's a few shy guys and oil spills around, but what else is there? I don't think anything. Sunset Wilds has banging music, but pretty much lacks in every other department. The background is desolate for no reason. The track design brings nothing new to the table, and it's just pretty forgettable overall. Straight into the top of C tier because the music carries it hard. Moving on to the third course in the Cherry Cup is another nostalgia bait from the Wii, and that would be Koopa Cape. I think the course is just a whole lot of fun to be honest. The idea is you're racing through like a mound side hydro plant or something like that, and it'll race through the mound side, ride down a whitewater river, then dive into an underground, underwater tube surrounded by eels and fish. It all looks great. The music is also really awesome here, guys. It's super catchy. Just hearing this song for the first time since the Wii brought back hella memories, and it's a bop to say the least. Plays awesome as well, lots of half pipe like jumps, the river section plays fast, and the underwater tube offers some really fun anti-grav racing with tons of boosts along the way. 
the more traditional racing parts also feel nice and i have no complaints other than you know i wish there was a little more like oomph sprinkled in you know to those areas as opposed to the river and tube only i've always loved kuba cape and i still love it the music bangs the environment is detailed and fits the theme there are some stellar course variety with gameplay and it's just all around a great throwback and an even greater course b tier right ahead of moonview highway okay guys we are at the very end of the road now and thank god we didn't end on a stinker because that would be a little disappointing to be honest no we are ending with the very delightful vancouver velocity from mario kart tour as you know by now i dig the nighttime winter look and vancouver delivers in the looks department everything from the snow falling the super pretty christmas lights the iconic building like the harbor center the harbor itself and even skating through a hockey arena it all fits canada perfectly the music is also like this futuristic hype up orchestra but it has this really nice like rift as the chorus and it's pretty catchy to be honest even if it's a different vibe than the traditional snow winter sound i like it i really like how this course plays too the different sections like the harbor the ski resort city and hockey arena all play differently but makes sense given their individual environment as a whole vancouver velocity represents the average mario kart course in general nice looking atmosphere fun lighthearted music interesting track mechanics and overall just a fun course to play on. B tier, right ahead of Cheap Cheap Beach. Alrighty guys, we have finally made it through all 88 Mario Kart 8 Deluxe tracks plus DLC in just under hour and 40 minutes. Flew by, didn't it? So now take a look at the completed tier list in all its glory. Isn't she just beautiful? Anyways guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was super long, but I want to take a crack at some longer form content and had an absolute blast making this video. Let me know what you agree with, disagree with, or anything in between. Let me know. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and check out some of my other content if you like. Anyways, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you again. Peace.